have to introduce you a poem. You know, there are many ancient poems about green China. One of the most popular ones is Sympathy for the Peasants. The poem goes like this. Hoeing millet in the midday heat, sweat dripping to the earth beneath. Do you know the fruit on your plate? Each grain was hard earned. How about your feeling about this poem? Actually, the main idea of this poem told us the farmers farmed and the hot sunshine of noon and sweat to the earth. And you know, the food on our plate is hard earned. In fact, this poem contains great truth. Green is very important and hard earned, isn't it? Actually, nobody doubts green is the basis of the human being as well as the nation. Therefore, we need to understand green rationally. The problem comes how to understand green. What is green? In fact, green perhaps have different identifications in the eyes of different persons. Someone will treat green as food, while others perhaps treat green as pr product. Even some people will think green is a profit or financial derivatives. Well, if you are going to lose your weight, green perhaps means the energy or nutrition. Well, on the view of a nation, green means the basis of national security. All the answers are possible. Besides its physical nature, commodity nature, and financial nature, this multitasking green has other roles to play, such as national security, macroeconomic policy, trade method, etc. Every human being, every area, every nation or need green as a basis of surviving and developing, inclu including you, me, Africa, Asia, Europe, and so on. Well, it's not easy to farm and to produce green. That needs many sunny days and rainy days, capital and labor, time and energy, land and water. Well, how to analyze green clearly? We need some powerful tools. For example, if we combine green and economics together, namely use theory to analyze green and then use policy to build guidelines for a particular purpose. So today, we are going to talk about the following problems. First, the concept and characteristics of green. Second, the concept and characteristics of economics of green. The third, theory of economics of green. Fourth, policy of economics of green. First of all, let's study the first question. What is green? Yeah, the concept and the characteristics of green. Being aware of define or definite concrete is the basis of scientific research. Here, we are going to talk about concept of green defined by two parts. One is China, the other is Food and Agriculture Organization. Actually, the concept of green is changing over time, especially changing over the development of technology, the consumption of people. Here, we are going to introduce the concept of green by China as well as by Food and Agriculture Organization. Firstly, the concept of green in China. Generally, in China, there are two basic understanding of green. One is generalized concept. Green consists of cereals, beans, and tubers. The other is narrow concept. Green means cereals only. Well, the concept of green defined by food and agriculture organization. They defined green as wheat, 
rice, barley, corn, rye, oat, sorghum, and so on. Well, the above is the concept. Then we talk about the characteristics of grain. First of all, strategic. We know that grain is the necessity of human being, and therefore it plays the strategic role of nation of a nation. Secondly, risk. It doesn't mean that grain is risk, but mean that the Production of grain is faced with all kinds of risks, such as the market risk, the technical risk, uh, financial risk, natural risk, and so on. So, so, uh, the third one, commodity. It means grain could be exchanged as commodity in the market. And the fourth one, positive externality. The industry of grain has the nature of positive externality. That means, on one hand, producer of grain do benefit on the consumer and processor of grain. And on the other hand, the supplying areas of grain do benefit on the demanding areas of grain. The above is the concept and characteristics of grain. And then, if we combine economics and grain together, we can draw the economics of grain. So, and then we are going to analyze grain on the view of economics. Firstly, the concept. The economics of grain means the producing, distributing, exchanging, consuming of grain and the relationships among them. It consists of the economic relationships and economic activities among grain producers, areas, and departments. Meanwhile, it consists of the relationships between agriculture and other industries in the whole economy. And then, let's talk about the characteristics of the economics of grain. Here, we are trying to take China, for example. Firstly, the produce of grain is restrictive. It's shown as two aspects. One is the farmland and water become more and more scarce. The second one, the increasing of per unit yield goes slowly. Secondly, inflexibility of the demand of grain in China. The inflexibility to the demand of grain mainly lies in the increasing of the inflexibility about traditional grain ration, feed grain, and traditional industrial food. And the third one, dependency of the importing of grain. The dependency of the importing of grain is mainly as a result of the inflexibility of demand of grain and the restriction of the produce of grain. The above three is the present characteristics of the economics of grain in China. And thirdly, after we have known the basic knowledge about the grain, about the economics of grain, then we are going to study this problems theory yeah theory of economics of grain here we try to take the grain crisis theory for example because you know there are many theories about economics of grain such as theory to the industry grain theory to the producing of grain theory to the circulation of grain theory of food safety theory of grain reserves, and so on. So many theories. So here, we'll try to select one of these. We are going to talk about the theory to the crisis of grain. About the grain crisis theory, there are three popular representative theories in China. They are grain basic industry theory, grain weak industry theory, and 
positive externality of green production theory. Now, let's give brief introduction of these three theories. First, green basic industry theory. Its core ideas is the green industry is a basic industry in the national economy. It's required to support green industry using policies in order to ensure the st stable development of the national economy. The second one, green weak industry theory. Which core ideas is for green industry is difficult to develop by itself because of the risk, circularity of green production, immobility of land, inelastic of supply and demand. So it's necessary to offer protecting policy to the green industry in order to ensure its coordinating development with other industries in one country. Thirdly, Positive externality of grain production theory. First of all, let's explain what is positive externality. According to the theory of economics, positive externality means one activity's marginal social benefit is greater than its marginal private benefit. Okay, for example, to you, you. The Nobel Prize winner in 2015 found out the specific medicine against uh, mal malaria, you know, against the malaria. Well, the marginal social benefit is much greater than Twilio's private benefit, isn't it? Another example, the bees of beekeepers pollinate the flowers of, of crops of farmers. Well, the beekeepers haven't any compensate from farmers. In other words, the beekeepers' social benefit is greater than its private benefit. Now let's research the positive externality of green production theory. Its core ideas is the marginal private benefit of food products is less than its marginal social benefit. That means the food producers provide society without enough compensation with market transaction. That will lead to the decrease of green, decline of social welfare. The, cra the corrective measure is offering green subsidy policies by the government. Okay, after the study of the theory, now let's go on our study of the policy of economics of green. Here we take economic management policy against food crisis in China, for example. You know, policy of economics of green means building guidelines in order to achieve a specific goal about the economics of green including action targets, principles, tasks, work methods, steps, and measures, and so on. Now, let's introduce several experiences against the food crisis in China. Now, let's introduce several, several experiences against the food crisis of China. First line, fund policy for green crisis. The fund is paid by the central government finance to ensure the supply growth. It mainly used in the subsidy to the green households, as well as used in the subsidy to the interest for national fixed storage, quantity of green and oil. Secondly, green fund policy for natural hazards. The fund is provided by the central government finance against the natural hazard to stabilize the green production. 
Number three, floor protect and compensation policy. The fund is paid by central government finance to compensate the regional governments and green households for protecting plow. The fourth, alliance policy for green households with high production. The fund is paid by the central government finance to reward households with high production. By credit, intensive supports should be offered in the aspects of popularizing science and technology and machinery work on the farmland. The fifth, supporting policy of shared financial benefits in countryside. Strengthen the sense of responsibility of bank business to sustain food cultivated by financial system innovation. Encourage the development of microcredit and microfinancial service, which are suitable for the country's demand. The sixth support policy for main green producing areas. The central government shifts the financial payment to mainly support main grain producing countries. Construct a grain produ production infrastructure in main food producing countries, including traffic, irrigation, water, and electricity supply. About policy of economics of grain. Number one, the target of policy is to protect the capacity of grain producing and processing to ensure grain harvest quantity and quality. Number two, its main method, offering funds to grain and agriculture on the basis of finance and political finance by the way of government payment and financial innovation. Number three, the compensate emphasizes the foundation of grain pro produce, science and technology, input of grain, transportation and processing of grain. Number four, the compensate objectives and cultivation households, scientific research, institutions, storage, transportation and processing enterprises. Okay, summary. Summary of today's discourse. Green is critical, important for human being, and meanwhile, it is full of challenges. If we say science and technology are effective way to promote the green industry and to against the green crisis, well, then economic theory and policy of green are the strong sword for the green industry. Okay, that's all. Thank you.